Before we dive too deeply into all of the different ways that you can change and manipulate your data, I want to begin by talking about some basic terminology relating to parts of the tables that we're going to be working with and also the ways that we can make changes to the tables. So first of all, when you have a pandas data frame, um, the as we learned in the previous lesson on basic um, details about data frames, each of the rows in the data frame can be referred to by its index. And in data frames as well as series, they both have uh, an integer index that is a numeric index, um, as we see right here, but they can also have an index label assigned to the row. And so uh, if you have assigned an index label, then you can refer to a particular row either by its, its index number or by its index label. Um, if you read in a generic spreadsheet from Excel or CSV into Pandas, it's going to start off only having the integer index. And so typically what will happen is one of the regular data columns will be chosen to serve as the label for that row. So in this example here, since each row represents a state, it makes sense to call, to have the label for that row to be um, the name of the state. And we will see uh, in the code examples how we can make that happen. So let's go ahead and go to the Jupyter Notebook. We'll go ahead and start off by importing pandas in the um, standard way. The file that we're going to be working with is some uh, data, some US government data <clears throat> on carbon dioxide emissions by uh, different sectors provided for each of the states and the District of Columbia. And this is uh, available through the internet so we can read it in as an Excel file using this URL. And there are actually two convenient ways that you can get a, a brief view of the data set. So each row is a different state. So if I examine the entire um, data set, I'm going to have at least 51 rows, actually 52 because there's also a, a total row. But if I just want to see the first five rows, I can do the head method and I can see the first five rows. And the tail method is actually quite useful because it allows you to see what's at the bottom of the table. And as I said, one of the rows of the table, which is like fundamentally different from the other rows is the bottom one, which is the total row. So one of the things we'll need to decide is when we're working with these data, do we actually want to include the total row because it's different from all the other rows which represent a particular state or the District of Columbia. So as you can see, <clears throat> this table came in from the uh, Excel spreadsheet with the state as one of the generic columns. And so at this point, the only way to reference the lines is by using the integer index for each of the lines. But if we want to um, turn the state column into the row index, we can use the method called set index. And so what you do, do in the set index method is to pass in the column name for the column that you want to set as the index. So I will go ahead and do this, and I can see the difference is here, this uh, bolded first column of numbers represents the indices, and the state uh, generic column is not bolded. But now that I have made it be the label for the table, um, it has become bolded, and also if we notice the header for state is uh, lower than the other column headers. So that's two ways that I can tell that this column represents the label for the row and not just a generic row whose contents happen to be the names of the states. 